Eh, wrong one. Hello, Internet! My name is Catherine Barson Eastis, and you are watching The Gluttonous Geek Presents Munchies and Minis, a cooking show where I first make a Dungeons and Dragons or tabletop role playing game snack, and then work on painting a mini. Uh, tonight is just gonna be munchies, uh, that is, unless I happen to have a little bit more time towards our, uh, the end to do a bit of painting. Probably not as likely. However, um, we are cooking up a couple of things because my annual wizard party is this weekend. So, um, once again, we are making that tabletop inspired snack. It's going to be uh, some goat cheese flatbread pizza inspired by the Adventure Zone Amnesty. And um, then we're going to be also working on my Elvermorny cranberry uh, pies. Uh, I've already made the dough up. I just need to make the filling and get them all baked up together because, like I said, I'm hosting a party this weekend. Ah! So, yeah, um, why don't we get started? And I guess I can just kind of ramble on as we do so. First, what you need to do to make these pizzas is preheat your oven. So we're just going to do that over here. Um, just to save us time, I'm going to put my oven on confection to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm just going to switch that over once we happen to get the oven to temperature. This just heats it up a little bit faster, so um, you're not just waiting on me to wait on an oven to preheat. You understand. So, right, let's go ahead and start prepping our things here. So what you're going to need, first and foremost, is your flatbread for your crust. So what I've got here is uh, some, some naan. It's probably the, the best option you're going to use uh, for flatbread, mostly because naan is kind of nice and moist and soft to begin with. Uh, the trouble you're going to have with a lot of pita bread is that it's kind of tough and dry, and the oven just only makes it pretty much cracker-like. Non bread will give you kind of the, more of the results you want, or it has just a little bit of give that you would expect in a pizza crust without being too crispy. So you're going to be needing four of these, and we are actually going to be putting these in the oven to crisp up just a little bit. Uh, before we put our toppings on. So let's go ahead and prep our pans with our flatbread. Um, you're going to need two baking sheets. So I'm just going to grab my two largest here. Yeah. And make a heck of a lot of noise while I'm at it. Yes. And I'm going to line these with tin foil because these are old as all get out and kind of rusty, so I don't want that getting in my food at all. I would use new pans, but I don't feel like spending the money on them quite yet. So. Just going to line that with some tin foil. Go ahead and place. Got two. Ready to go. And then the other two. Now, just to let you guys know that I did not have a chance to charge a new set of batteries before uh, starting the stream. So if my sound goes out at all during the stream, do pop in the chat and let me know. And I can switch out the batteries I have currently charging with the ones I have in my pack right now. So um, just give you a heads up. <laughs> all right. So we got our crusts going and now we just need to do a little prepping of our toppings. So uh, since this pizza is inspired by the Adventure Zone Amnesty, which takes place in Kepler, West Virginia, it's a fictional West, Vir uh, West Virginia town uh, by the Monongahela Forest, I always wanted to go with toppings and flavors that kind of go along with that whole uh, flavor profile of what's found in the Mon uh, Monongahela Forest, especially since our character Billy, the, uh, the goat man, uh, is helping things grow during said episode. So um, we want to have things that grow in Monongahela Forest. So 
Uh, we've got some fresh rosemary here that we're going to chop up and add to our sauce. Uh, I also have some fresh sage as well. That should give the nice kind of earthy sort of flavor to our sauce. And also, once I dive into my fridge once again, ah, and have things fall out of said fridge, I'm okay. Don't you worry. Ah, oh, goodness. This is the problem with trying to stream the week you have a party. Your fridge is full, full, full. So, right, I'm back. So, uh, also, you want some maple syrup. Now, the majority of the tre uh, deciduous trees you're gonna find in the Monongahela forest are maple trees. So, maple syrup. And if you're thinking tomato sauce and maple syrup, that sounds weird. Yes, it is, but it is delicious. Um, then, to add a little bit of uh, character representation into our dish, uh, since Duck Newton, um, Billy's best friend, uh, absolutely adores French onion soup, we're gonna be using some sliced red onion to kind of recall that on our pizza, as well as some duck. Now, um, this is just roast half duck. The whole reason why I'm using um, took the duck that's already cooked is that it's gonna save you so much time. You don't wanna have to roast a duck before you make a pizza. So, Kroger does offer these. Uh, usually, I wanna say $10 for a whole, well, for a package of uh, roast duck. It will also give you a packet of orange sauce. We are not using that. However, if you want to kind of hang on to that packet and use it for another dish, go for it. I will not stop you. But we will be uh, shredding that up as uh, another pizza topping. And of course, since Billy's a goat man, we will be using some goat cheese crumbles. Um, and also some fresh basil because basil, um, fresh basil on top of a pizza is freaking delicious. So, like I said, we need to prep our toppings, so that means a lot of cutting, slicing, and dicing. So let's just go ahead and get started on that. I'm just gonna pull out a cutting board here. Mostly because I don't feel like cleaning my wooden cut, uh, cutting board at the moment. And like I said, we've got a, a little bit more stuff to do tonight, so. First things first, let's go ahead and cut our onion up. So here's a quick and dirty lesson on how to use a chef's knife. Um, have the index finger of your dominant hand right here on the blade. Put your thumb on the other side and then comfortably wrap your fingers around the handle. And you don't necessarily have to pinch the knife so much. I mean, the pinch is kind of just the term that a lot of um, cooking enthusiasts use to well, just kind of get that motion, I mean, in your head, but you still want to have that be at your fulcrum point, essentially. So rather than doing this because it's going all over the place, when you hold it with your finger and thumb on the blade, it's not really going anywhere. Good. Glad you're going along with me on this. So first I'm just going to take off the top of this, and I am keeping the peel, as well as the layers I don't use. Next, I'm just gonna tear that off and throw that part out, because stickers are not good. Well, they're not delicious. Get that sliced in half. So I'm only gonna use about half, and maybe even possibly a quarter of this onion, since it's a rather large one. That's okay. Um, nice thing about onions is that they are versatile. I also might mix it in what's left into my, uh, what's it called? Usador salsa. Okay. And for those who are fans who of Hello from the Magic Tavern, the improv comedy podcast, 
I do have a couple of Hello from the Magic Tavern recipes on my blog, thegluttonousgeek.com. If you want to check that out, um, the link to my blog is down in my profile. So there you go. So yeah, now that I've got half my onion, I'm going to julienne that. So to do that, I need to make long cuts along lines, kind of a radial pattern. So I have strips. So you'll see what I mean here. I'm just kind of putting in the corner of the knife and then drawing it inward and trying to follow the lines of the onion in about half inch thick pieces. doesn't have to be perfect, but the general idea is to have these all cook up at the same amount of time. You don't really want any raw onion on your pizza. Though, the nice thing about red onions is that they can be slightly underdone, or just raw in general, and still be delicious. But they are also a very spicy onion, so if you're not really into spicy stuff, you might want to actually cut your um, onion slices a little thinner to have it cr uh, crisp up and caramelize a little bit more. Okay, my, onion, my oven is preheated, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my flatbread in there. So um, first I'm gonna switch it back to a regular bake 425 because I don't want these uh, cooking up too quickly. Yep, there are beeps. Um, the thing is the convection is it tends to dry out and cook things up much faster, which is great, you know, if you know what you're if you know what you're doing. But when I'm trying to create a recipe that is um, accessible to most people's kitchens, most people don't have a convection oven. So um, that's why I'm doing the regular bake. You know, try to be equal to everybody. So yeah, I'm just gonna get the first one in there and set that sucker for about three minutes. Cool. Okay, so where were we? Yes, so I have all my um, radial slices on my onion. Now I'm just going to take the bud end off of that. And now I have all these beautiful onion slices. So I'm just gonna grab a bowl to put that in. I have a couple of prep bowls here. just so I have everything on hand and ready to go. What am I going to do with the other half of this onion? Well, that's why getting an onion saver is pretty darn awesome. You see them at the grocery store all the time. One of these suckers. Just stick that in there. And there you go. Ready to stick in the fridge without stinking up your fridge. Cool. All right, so next up, I'm going to start chopping up my fresh herbs. So I have those ready to go. So first, I'm just going to strip that stalk of rosemary. And just kind of give that a rough chop. It looks like this is gonna to equal to about, I wanna say half a teaspoon. Feel free to, to chop up more if you like. That is unless I happen to send my husband out into the dark to get more fresh rosemary, but uh, I think we're gonna be nice this time to him. Okay. 
So I'm just gonna write that down. That was about a, roughly a teaspoon of fresh chopped rosemary. And now I just need a little bit of fresh sage. So we're gonna go simple with this too. Probably, let's see. Oh, that's my first set of flatbread. So let's get ahead, go ahead and take that out of the oven. And get the next one in. Set that for about three minutes. Go back to prepping our toppings. Cool, so I've got about four large sage leaves here. And the next cut I'm gonna do is called a chiffonon, where it's a fancy name for cutting into tiny little ribbons. So for sage, what you wanna do, or just basically any kind of fresh herbs, and you'll see this again when I chop up the fresh basil a little bit, a little bit later, you kind of want to wrap that bundle into a tight roll. And then just take your knife and cut ribbons alongside of that roll. Though from that shift knot, I'm now going to just kind of chop that. So we have smaller pieces. Okay, cool. So that equals to about a tablespoon of chopped sage. And to that, we are gonna be adding some tomato paste and maple syrup to make our sauce. So, First, get a can of tomato paste. Open it up. Wait for the inevitable um, calling of all three of your cats because they happen to hear a can opener within the vicinity of the household. Run your can over again over said. <laughs> I need a new can opener. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna need about a half cup of tomato paste. So first I'm just gonna give this a spray to make sure that my tomato paste doesn't stick to the inside. Get out a spoon. The whole thing is I wanna keep the stuff that's in the can as clean as possible because then I can just put the top on it and use it for other recipes. I mean, the nice thing about tomato paste is that it adds a crap ton of flavor to whatever savory item you're cooking, as well as thicken any sauces. Cool, so there's my half cup of tomato paste. Close that back up. All right. And take out this other set of flatbread. Cool. All right. So, we got that, and we're going to add made some maple syrup. And let's go with about a half tablespoon at a time because I'm going to be tasting this as I go. So there's a half tablespoon. And 
actually, I think I'm going to need some garlic powder too. So let's add some garlic powder. Let's go with a teaspoon of garlic powder to start. Now, if you're thinking, oh, maple syrup and garlic powder, what the heck? Well, I have two recipes where I make garlic roasted, well, sorry, uh, olive oil roasted garlic cloves, and then pair it with some maple syrup candied walnuts. And the flavor combination is quite delightful. And let's add a pinch of salt to that as well. So pinch of kosher salt. And let's see how we do with that so far. Mmm. It's good. Mmm. The sage is really coming out there. I'm just gonna add another pinch of salt. And a little bit more maple syrup. So it's another half uh, tablespoon maple syrup, which means we have about a tablespoon of syrup in there at the moment. Mm. That, my friends, is magical. Now, you're not really going to get the flavor of the maple syrup so much as you eat it, but it actually adds a lot of depth to your sauce so I think it works nicely so just gonna throw that into the wash and clean up my maple syrup bottle because I have another recipe this weekend that I need to use maple syrup for just get that back in the fridge. Where are they? There it is. Okay. And hopefully not have a billion things fall on top of me. So now that we have our, our sauce messed up, uh, not messed up, mixed up, I'm just going to set this off to the side to let the flavors marry. Cool. All right. So now I just need to write down what I did there. So that was about a tablespoon. I'll put one to two tablespoons of maple syrup in case you decide you want a little bit of sweeter sauce. All right, yeah. Uh, let's see, that was half a cup. And two pinches of, yeah. I'm trying to write when I have tomato paste on my hands. <laughs> ah, stop it. Okay. Pinches of kosher salt. And garlic powder. And we used a teaspoon of garlic powder. Just to reiterate what we've been doing tonight. Cool, let me just go ahead and put this tomato paste away. And we can finish prepping up our ingredients with some roast duck. Big thing about cooking is cleaning as you go. That can go in here. And now I just need my duck. All right, so we got our duck and orange sauce. I'm just gonna stick that in the fridge because we're not really gonna need to use it. And 
like I said, this duck is already cooked up, so don't really have to worry about like handling any kind of raw waterfowl. Though, can you see? Isn't that lovely? So I'm just gonna. Kind of shred that up, cut, cut the meat off. So that's, I think, the majority of the breast meat. Is there anything on these wings? Not really. Okay. And I think I'm just kind of left with some bone and ligaments. Okay, so we got all of our duck cut off the bone. Well, uh, duck meat cut off the bone. And I'm just gonna shred up what's left of that. It's like, hey Abe, how's it going? Um, ooh, chicken, yes, lots of meat on dim wings. This is actually a roast duck because I'm making a duck and goat cheese pizza inspired by Billy from Adventure Zone Amnesty. And speaking of duck. I'm gonna have a heck of a delicious bone broth once I manage to get all of these things. But guess what? Guess what? Did, I, did you get the job? Or a job? I'm, I think you mentioned that job you were talking about. You were uh, gonna um, had an interview with them. Got an offer at the company I was excited about. Good for you! Congratulations, dude! Um, yeah, I, uh, start on the 18th. Well, congratulations, Abe. You deserve everything good in this world. So I'm very excited for you and congratulations. Um, six more working days at the Hell Commute. Oh, God. Yeah, I can, that's not fun, but you know, you get that job. And you no longer have that hell commute, so yay! So happy for you. Um, goodness. But yeah, so to kind of recap on this recipe, let me go ahead and just shred up what's left of this duck meat here. So I was kind of going for a Goodness. Stuff that was thematic to the character as well as the location. Since in the episode we meet Billy, he and the other goat men are trying to get this like giant tree to grow. So they're all about growth. So that's why I've got some fresh herbs mixed into our sauce as well as some maple syrup because the most um, 
common deciduous tree in the Monongahela forest is a maple tree. And, uh, but yeah, so we mixed up kind of a maple syrup tomato paste sauce with fresh sage and rosemary and uh, garlic powder. Then we've got uh, some sliced red onion and duck meat, as well as goat cheese crumbles. And we're going to be making some goat cheese pizzas with this whole lot. With using fresh naan bread, which I already had toasting in the oven for about uh, four minutes, well, three minutes already at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for those taking notes at home. And now it's time to make some pizza. So I'm just gonna spread out my sauce here. It's about a half cup of tomato paste with a tablespoon of maple syrup, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a tablespoon of fresh sage and a teaspoon of fresh rosemary. So let's go ahead and get. So yeah, admittedly there will not be any painting tonight because, um, as you know, it is my annual wizard party this weekend. So I will also be pulling out some, um, well, working on some cranberry pies for our dish. So just okay, flatten it out. Then split that sauce into quarters. And then just spread the sauce liberally on top of the flatbread. Yeah. And try to spread it out as much as you can. Oh, and the other half. Nope, quarter. Okay. It's like, yeah, we're still trying to figure out if we can make it. The kennel is full and the wife doesn't want to leave the dogs home alone. That I can totally understand. But, you know, we would still love to have you, and if you make it, that would be amazing. And if not, well, this is an annual party, so we will be more than happy to invite you to come and join us again uh, next year. So, there's our sauce. All right. Now, I wrote this recipe down. I wrote down as using essentially a quarter cup of mozzarella cheese on top of each pizza, but I may actually go over that and then rewrite it because I love cheese, but we also do have goat cheese. So we'll see what we work with. Okay. So I got some shredded mozzarella here. Where is my quarter cup? That's an eighth of a cup, but that's okay. So. But yeah, this has been, oh man, this week's been crazy. I mean, I thought it was like, okay, I've got all these recipes cooked up now and shot. I can totally get caught up on the blog. Yeah, about that. So, um, the owner of the school I work at, oh no, we definitely need more cheese than that, um, decided 
that he was going to turn off the gas over the summer and not tell anybody about it. So, we, uh, <laughs> we were freezing our butts off, pretty much, and, uh, yeah, they, he's like thinking, oh, well, I can save money. Yeah, except when the reconnect fee is, like, an extra $150. I mean, we weren't going to use gas during the summer. So, yeah. Apparently, they didn't get that all hooked up until after I left work today, so. So, yeah. <laughs> Trying to work when you can't feel your legs. Not fun. All right, so I've got about three eighths of a cup of mozzarella cheese on each pizza there. Uh, so now I'm just going to throw on some toppings. So we've got, should be like 57 space heaters in your office. Well, that's a funny thing. I actually brought a space heater today and my boss had brought to write down how much cheese. So it's three eighths. Okay, three times four is twelve. Twelve divided by eight. Oh goodness. That is about mm, six fourths. So six fourths, three halves, one and a half cups of mozzarella cheese. Cool. I'll just update that. 1.5 cups. Okay, cool. Uh, goat cheese crumbles. Let's see how much we can fit on each pizza. Where did my tablespoon go? I had a tablespoon, measuring spoon. Ha ha! <laughs> tablespoon. Okay. start out with a tablespoon. Tablespoon looks good. Hmm. But I love cheese. So we're going to do two tablespoons of goat cheese on each pizza. There we go. All right, now that that batch is ready to go, we're gonna stick it into the oven for about four, uh, four to five minutes. We're gonna check on it after four. And then make up our next round of pizzas. Let's see, is that safe to, yeah. All right, back we are to prepping pizzas. Okay, so. do that. So just spread that on there. Try to spread it as much as you can. So it's just a little bit of a margin. And try to spread it evenly so you have, for the most part, kind of an even layer of sauce all throughout your pie. Okay.
done with our sauce. Now on to cheese. Toss this. Cheese. It's about, large pinch is about an eighth of a cup. Up, onion. Realistically, you're probably only going to need about a quarter of a red onion depending on its size. Okay. Duck meat. And here as well. That is the timer. Let me go check on that. Let's see. Um, I can go for another minute. Just enough time for me to get goat cheese on these other pizzas. Just in time. There we are. Right. Potholder. Yes, I hear you. Okay. Oh, oh that looks nice. Just get these other two. And set the timer for about five minutes. Excellent. So, now you can see the results. And now I just need to top that with some fresh basil. So, let me get my basil out. I'm going to move this out of the way so I have some room to chop.
And ideally, I kind of want to have enough basil to have about, uh, I'd say about a tablespoon of chopped basil on each. Probably about a half tablespoon, more like. So once again, like I did with the sage earlier, I'm just going to gather all my fresh herbs into a bundle. Well, fresh basil, because it's only one herb. And then... Slice that into ribbons. And that looks like it's about, yeah, that's about two tablespoons. That should be enough to garnish our pizzas. Gonna stick that into a prep bowl for now. And get this back here. Where's my pot holder? There it is. Okay. So yeah, just now going to Top that with some fresh chopped basil. Doesn't that look pretty? And it should also be cool enough to. slide onto a cutting board if I want to. Holder. Admittedly, what I kind of want to do is see how they all look before I slice them up and eat them because I want the most photogenic um, pizzas for my photos later. You know, once the stream is over, I'm going to be rushing upstairs to Get a nice photo of this before it all gets um, wilty and stuff. Mm. Okay, my final minute left on my pizza, the last two pizzas. Don't need that. And what was I doing? Brain. Brain, do not fail me now. Oh, that was my neck. <laughs> yeah, I've been cooking since, um, hmm, I want to say uh, 3 p.m. today, but that was only because uh, I was doing a lot of chores right before that. So, yeah, I think I've been on my feet for the past. Oh God, four hours. Um, but hey, at least I'm burning lots of calories, right? Okay, that is the last of our pizzas. And trivet. Fresh basil. Hey, babe. Carter. Yeah. Uh, can you come help me uh, pick out which pizzas we should not eat and which ones we should? I promise there's food for you in this. And food for me.
So and pick out the two that are the most photogenic. The fourth one's over there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. So I'll just... Oh, okay. Get that one off of the cutting board. Okay, so I'm just going to now cut this kind of a zigzag pattern. And feed my husband. <laughs> Get you a paper towel. There you go. Fed husband. Accomplishment achieved. So. <laughs> Good? Yay! Pizza served up. Whew. All right. Jeez. There we are. All right. Yay. Fear not, friends, this is not the end of our episode. For those who are joining us on YouTube, this is actually where I'm going to be cutting the video off, so thanks for watching Munchies and Minis. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please join me uh, next week, where I might be actually be doing two episodes during the week, because I'm going to be out of town in Mexico from the 18th to the 23rd. However, if you want to still hang out on the stream, I'm going to be working on some cranberry pies inspired by Elmer Morney uh, from the um, Harry Potter Wizarding World for my wizard party this weekend. I've already made up the dough, now I just need to make up the filling and bake the pies. And therefore also check off another thing on my list of things to make this weekend. But first... I need to eat. So, this is a good time for me to sit down and eat my pizza. So, um, yeah. Mm. <laughs>